Welcome to Lonely Christian Church, those online and in person. Philippians 4, verse 23, the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Amen. Today is going to be a very special service with beautiful music from young and old, and you'll just have to determine which are the young and which are the old when they sing. <laughs> Stand please for opening prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the day that we're getting ready to have. As we're coming here today, all we ask is for you to open our hearts and our eyes and let this message sink in and let everything you're doing in our lives be visible to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Continuing with our worship, let us join in praise and worship by singing Mighty is Our God, hymn 41, all verses.
Good morning, everybody. Good morning. You guys are getting better every week. We're so glad that you are here to worship with us this morning. Uh, we have a few uh, additions uh, or updates to add, and we'll open the floor up for those as well. Uh, do you serve the family in prayer uh, as they are continuing uh, just to need this prayer that just need uh, their church family when needed? So uh, be praying for them. Um, I got a text from Bev this morning. Kurt Hadaball is in need of a lot of prayer uh, as he is continuing to go through testing. Um, so just pray for Bev and Kurt uh, and their health issues as they are continuing uh, through the to battle through these. Um, we have a praise for Sandy's shoulder. Now, I talked to her beforehand before service. She said her shoulder's already feeling better. So hopefully the third time was the charm. So I said, Dennis is glad for the break. You can't hit Dennis now. <laughs> oh, so we're so glad. We're so glad that that went well for Sandy. Are there any other additions or updates or praises? Angie. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to sound like a broken record, but you see all those kids sitting up front here? They're going downstairs and learning about Jesus and having a lot of fun. So if you want a blessing, go downstairs and go out that door and go watch the kids because they're having a great time learning about Jesus right now. All right. Well, if there is nothing else, then uh, let's take the time and go to God uh, in prayer. Father God, we are, we're so grateful for the power of prayer. Father, we're so grateful that we can bring everything on our hearts and our minds and we can lay them at your feet. And Father, the prayer requests that have been mentioned this morning for the Sturgeon family, for Bev and Kurt, uh, we just, we lift them up to you, Father. We lift them up to you. We ask for comfort, for guidance. And we ask that you would show up and show off in each situation. For the praises that have been mentioned this morning for Sandy and for the praises that are just on our hearts. Uh, for the times we've seen you work, Father, uh, we thank you for that. We thank you for the praises and for working in our lives. Father, as we continue our time of worship, as we continue to praise your name, as we gather around the table and as we dive into your word father please fill this place with your presence and help us to be drawn closer to you from us being here and worshiping thank you god and it's in your son's name we pray amen As we prepare for a time of communion, let us sing communion hymn, The Old Rugged Cross, hymn 313, and let's do all verses, please.
I have to tell you that, uh, you know, as an elder, uh, I thought we were supposed to teach the kids everything they know. But what I found out over the last couple of weeks is the kids are teaching me. Last week, if you might remember, I shared this story with you about Addie and teaching me about the perfect flower and how we all should be, uh, get rid of the dead stuff and become like that. Well, there's another story I want to share with you today, and this is dangerous because I'm trying to have uh, live participation to see if I can get him to do it. Uh, but a couple weeks ago, at the Palm Sunday, here we were having the Easter egg hunt. And of course, Grandpa's goal for his uh, grandson is to find as many eggs as you can, right? To fill this basket completely up, to do better than everybody else. So I'll see if I can get him to take it. And I was telling him, he would pick one up, and I'd say, put it in here. Put it in here. And what would he do? Just hang on to it. <laughs> and, I, you know, then I even tried stuff like hitting his hand, you know. And I was going, come on, you know, we got to find some. There's all kinds of eggs out here. But the story that really came to my mind as I thought about that is... As a youngster, he's afraid that if he lets go of this, he don't know what's next. This is his security. This is what he likes. And so he doesn't realize, because of his fear, if he lets go of this one, he's not going to enjoy the rest of the blessings that could come out of it. And so don't worry about him. By next year, he'll outgrow his fear of letting go. And he'll fill this basket up. But what I worry about is not him and his Easter eggs. I worry about us as adults and the fears that we might have. Uh, because in the Bible, <laughs> yay! Good job, buddy. He's already the power of prayer. He's already <laughs> overcome. The, he's already overcome. But if you think about in, in the Bible, you probably don't realize this, but 365 times the Bible says, fear not. Amen. Fear not. And as adults, I think if we're honest with ourselves, we do have fears that we need to overcome. Why should we overcome those fears? Real simply because Mark chapter 9 verse 23 says, all things are possible to him who believes in Christ. So as we go through this communion time, I just want us to all reflect on what fears are out there in your life. Is it the fear of loving someone that because you might get rejected? You know, is it the fear of uh, helping someone because you might get taken advantage of? Is it the fear of asking for help Sometimes we're all afraid to ask for help in the times that we need it most. So just keep in mind that the one thing that we don't need to be fearful of is our eternal life. Because as we're going to celebrate here in just a few minutes, Jesus came as the perfect sacrifice, died on the cross for the remission of our sins. So as we go into communion, let's thank him that's one fear that we never have to worry about. Shall we pray? Father, as we come to you during this communion time, we realize that there's a lot of fear in our life. So, Lord, we just pray that you take away those fears and that, Lord, uh, you help us to walk uh, in a way that we fear not. For, Father, as we fear, it prohibits us from enjoying the fullest blessings that you have planned for us so, Lord, help us to overcome our fear. And, Lord, especially we thank you that you gave your son the perfect sacrifice that we never have to worry about our eternal life as long as we just believe in you. For, Father, this we pray in your name. Amen. Amen.
Jesus is all the world to me. He is my all to all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad to him I go. I make me my by an end. I'm lost. He makes me glad. He's my friend. Jesus is all the world to me, my friend in trial sore. I go to him for blessings and he gives them o'er and o'er. He sends the sunshine and the rain. He sends the harvest golden grain. Harvest of grain, sunshine and rain. He's my friend. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Savior, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about Jesus is all the world to me. I want no better friend. I'll trust him when life's fleeting days shall end. Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life, eternal joy. He's my friend. You know what? At least I'm honest. I'm not going to top that. I just hope to keep everybody awake. That's all I want to do is keep everybody awake. Sometimes that's a challenge. Oh, goodness. Well, I'm going to start off my message a little different this morning. I want to start off with a statement, and we're going to talk about it. Start off with a statement, God is love. God is love. The Apostle John put it in every book that he wrote. John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John. And in 1st John 4, 7, 4, 7 and 8, he writes, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. God is love. Now before we get started, the housekeeping details of today, I'm going to have some things for you to write down. 
please write down the scripture verses and go back and look at those this week. So if you've got anything to write on or make a note in your phone, um, please do that. There's just a couple things that I want you to write down and look at this week. God is love. It's just a remarkable statement, isn't it? It's a statement that can just take a bad day and just make it better, isn't it? God is love. When we're down in the dumps, when we have things going, going on in our lives, God is love is something that can change that. Because for God, when we look at God is love, it's not something that comes and goes like we see from humans in our human interaction. God is a loving creator. He cannot be unloving towards us. There is nothing that we are going to be able to do to separate us from His love. Then John takes and applies it. Because God is love, we're to love one another. Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. So no love equals no God. Now that sounds okay, that makes sense. But do we understand the magnitude of that? Do we understand the full magnitude of understanding that if we're not showing love, that we are not in God? We are not in Him. We are not being like Him. I heard the story once of Jeff Gannon, and he's a pastor. One day, the phone rang in his office, so he picked up, and a young woman on the other end said, I have just one question for you. May I come to your church? Well, Jeff was stunned. Of, of course you can come. Why would you feel like you need to ask permission to come to church? And she goes, let me tell you my story before I answer that. Come to find out that when she was a junior in high school, she got pregnant by a young man who had no interest in her or in the baby. She kept the baby and decided to get her life back on track, so she has started tending, attending the church that she was raised in. After a few months, she talked with her pastor, and she thought that Maybe other girls might need to learn from her mistake. Well, the pastor looked at her and said, I would never allow that. I'm afraid of your type of person rubbing off on them. And she was hurt. But she kept coming. After her baby was born, she called the pastor to schedule a, a baptism for her baby. And the pastor said, that is not going to happen in my church. I would never baptize an illegitimate baby. She continues, now that you know my story, can I still come to your church? Jeff's comments were, I think Jesus might need to have a talk with that pastor. <laughs> we're going to do round robin of Bible verses, so write these down. 1 John 4, 8, but whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. If you don't know love, you don't know God. 1 John 4, 16. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God. And God in them because God is love. 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. We are children of God. The Father lavishes great love and He calls us His children. And it's true. We, every one of us sitting here, every one of us watching online, is God's beloved child. God calls you His children. Now, I joke around about Noah a lot because, I mean, he's, he doesn't care that I do it. Um, even if he did, I got done to me as a kid. Um, it's just payback. Um, but I love my kid. I love my kid. 
Last night, he was, we have a little chair for him in the living room, and he had decided that he was going to take the footstool apart and take the cushion and set it right by his chair and do backflips off of his chair onto the cushion. He did it about three times before I really caught on to what he was doing, and I walked in and I had to get on to him and say, well, you can't do backflips off this. And he looked at me, well, why? But I love my child and I don't want him to get hurt. Funny, I think God does that for me sometimes. Sometimes I think maybe God looks at me the same way I looked at my son doing a backflip and says, what are you doing? Just stop. Maybe that's just me. But God loves you. He loves you more than you can love your child. He loves you as a parent who wants everything to go well for you. So I have a question, and that question for you this morning is, do you believe that? Do you believe that God loves you and wants the best for you? I have a friend who's been struggling with depression, and he's gone to see a counselor. And not long ago, the counselor pointed out that although my friend knows that God loves him, he doesn't always act like it. He knows, but he doesn't seem to believe it. He was acting like God loved him if he was good enough, if he did the right things. And if he didn't, well, God probably didn't love him. Does that idea sound familiar to us? Many of us unintentionally believe the same thing. That God loves us when we're good and rejects us when we're not. But the gospel says it different. And in Romans 5.8 it says it different. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. God didn't demonstrate His love for us when we were good enough. God didn't say, oh, that's great, you're doing so good, here's your cookie and here's your love. It's not what God did. God saw that we couldn't do it on our own, we couldn't in any way, shape, or form do it on our own, and He said, okay, this is the moment I'm going I'm to send my son to die for you. I'm going to demonstrate my love when you are unable to do anything on your own. Now, believing this truth will set you free. Now, when I say the word believing it, it's not just, oh yes, JD, I know, I know that. I know that I know that God sent his son to die and he did it because I couldn't do it. There's a difference in saying it and actually believing it and living it. There's a big difference between the two. God does not love us based on performance. God does not love us based on anything that we find important in our own lives. God doesn't love us based on those things. God loves us because He loves you for who you are. There is nothing that you are going to be able to do to separate yourself from God's love. I don't care... What sin is in your past, I don't care what feelings are in your soul right now. I don't care what those are. I can stand here today and make a statement that says, God still loves you. God still loves you right now. So do you know and do you believe that God loves you? Because if you do... Believe that and you live it. It will change your life. God is love. That will change your life. Now, in the world, love is used to mean all kinds of different things that are not what lo- this type of love we're talking about. The world wants to cheapen the word love. God's love 
doesn't get cheapened like the world's view does. Love doesn't mean a zero score in tennis for God. But as we are giving God's love shown on us, God calls us to go out and love others. Now, what does that look like, going out and loving others? Because we're receiving love from God, a, a, a love we can only slightly understand in our human uh, sinful brains. But he's, we're receiving this love, and then we are called to send that love out to others. Now, what does that look like? I want you to write this down, take a note of this any way you can, and look at this this week. And it's going, to be a hard, it's going to be a hard thing to do this week, but I want us to try. Love is doing what's best for another, no matter what it costs you. Let me read that again. Love is doing what's best for another, no matter what it costs you. That's a tough statement to grasp. Because in our own brains, we're sitting there going, well, yeah, I'm going to love you, but I mean, I'm going to protect myself. Yeah, I'm going to love you, but that's really an inconvenience. I'm going to love you, but there are no buts. There are no excuses. When we are showing God's love to others, when we're showing Christ's love to somebody who needs it. Love is doing what's best for another no matter what it costs you. We're commanded to love. Love God, love your neighbor, love your spouse, love your kids. Even go as far as to love your enemies. Love is not a feeling Love is not saying to like me. We are called to love those people. I want to well, use Pat for an example here. If I walked up and punched Pat in the face and said, but you need to like me, is that going to work? I mean, it's not, is it? I can't just walk up and tell Pat, you're going to like me and smack him in the face. That doesn't work. That's why love is not a feeling. Love is a call to action. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but will have eternal life. God loved us with an action. God's love is with an action. God's love is that He gave His Son so that we could be with Him in heaven. That's not a feeling. That is an action. God's love also does something and continues to do something and it continues to be an action. God loves me more than I ever could think of deserving. God has loved me in ways that I can't even describe in words today. And my job is to take that love that God has given to me and to show it to others. Not just to make them feel good, but to do things for them, to sacrifice for them. 1 John 4, 9 and 10, this is how God showed His love among us. He sent His one and only Son into the world that we might live through Him. This is love, not that we have loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son, an atoning sacrifice for our sins. This is love. Love is God sending Jesus to give His life for us. Love is doing what's best for somebody else no matter what the cost is. Matthew 5, 43-48 You've heard it said, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. 
But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. And if you love those who love you, what reward will you get? Are not even the tax collectors doing that? And if you greet only your own people, what are you doing more than others? Don't even pagans do that? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And I'm sure that I can go on and go on and go on. I could keep us here past lunchtime for just pretty easily just talking about verse after verse of God showing us love. But the question is, I can talk up here till I'm blue in the face. We can read Scripture all day long. But the question today is, do you believe it? Not do you know it, not the knowledge in here, but do you believe it in here? And are you willing to walk out of these doors and not think about yourself, but to show God's love out in our community? Are we willing to do that? The story from earlier about the young woman whose pastor rejected her, She ended up at Jeff's church where she learned that God loved her and her baby was baptized and she was asked to work with the young people there. She then went on to finish her education and eventually went into mission work. Today her and her daughter live and work as missionaries in Africa where they tell people that there is a God who loves everyone always. Guys, I don't want us to miss this mark. I want us to know in our heads that God loves us. But I want you to know in your hearts that God loves you. And He loves you deeply. And God wants the very best for you in your life. Sometimes that means telling you no. Sometimes that means saying, hey, you're going the wrong direction. Let's move you this way. But God's love for you is so deep that we can't fathom it. And if we know it in our heart and in our soul, it is going to come out in an action. If you get nothing else from this message, get that. That if you are understanding and believing in God's love, that it is not conditional, it will come out in an action. It will change your life. I don't care if you've been a Christian for three hours, 30 years, or 70 years. This will change your life. The key is, will you allow God to work in you that way? Let's pray. Father God, we are so grateful for your love. We're so grateful for the love that you demonstrated by sending your son Jesus to die on the cross. We're so grateful, Father, for that example. And Father, we're grateful that your love for us is not conditional. That no matter what we're going through, no matter what we feel right now, it is not conditioned to that. Your love comes to us just because you care about us. Father, help us this week to choose love. Help us to choose to show your love not as a condition, but as a testimony to how awesome our God is. We thank you, Father, for all that you do for us each and every day. And it is in your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to sing our ministry him is I am resolved. If you have a decision to make uh, for Jesus, then this is the time to come forward. If you'd like to place your membership, then this is the time to come forward as well. Or if you just like to come and pray, you're more than welcome to do that. But this is another time that we have that we can worship our Savior. So let's stand as we sing, I am resolved.
All right, a couple of quick announcements. Teen group, four to six tonight. So if you know any teenagers, uh, invite them to come out and uh, experience Jesus in that way. Again, broken record. If you want a blessing, go out through the gym and watch all those kids worshiping Jesus. Uh, there's a lot of things going on in the life of the church, so make sure that you are looking at your bulletins and make sure you're making notes for that Tuesday night group, Thursday night prayer group, Monday night open gym. There's always something going on, so we encourage you to come out and be a part of that. And, and invite somebody if you, would, if you would like to as well to come and support the kids' ministry. Yes. Christian Companions, Thursday night at 7, all the ladies at the church. Christian Companions, Thursday night, 7 o'clock. All right. If nothing else, then let's go to God in prayer, and then we will sing our closing song. Father God, we are so grateful that we've been able to be in your house this morning. We've been able to worship you and gather as brothers and sisters in Christ. As we depart from this place, Father, help us to show your love in every, per, every situation and to every person that we encounter this week. Be with us. Put a hedge of protection around us to protect us from whatever Satan will throw our way this week. We thank you, Father, and we praise you, and it's in your Son's name we pray. Amen.